Buenos dias, third graders. It's a great day to make it a great day. I'm excited to teach a little reading with you today, but unfortunately we have another mystery to solve at the Olson house. Check it out. The Olson family's been eating a lot of snacks over the past few weeks, and I have to admit they haven't all been healthy snacks. Um, our favorite right now is Oreos, and we've been eating these just about every day at snack time in the afternoon. Yesterday we got ready for our snack time with three Oreos sitting on the kitchen table. One for me, one for Charlie, one for Christian. None for Miles, he doesn't have teeth or eat food yet. And none for Jenny, because she's healthier than all of us. Well, we were all set for our snack time, but then we heard the baby crying, and off I had to go to help take care of him. I told the boys to wait for me until I was back and that we'd have snack time in a minute but I bet you can guess what happened. The Oreos that had once been on the plate had now disappeared. And our family had the mystery of the missing Oreos. Okay, crime solvers, let's take a look at the skills we've learned so far about solving mysteries this week. Over the past two days, we've given you some tips on how to become a better mystery reader. Two days ago, we said that you need to preview your mystery and figure out what is the mystery that you're solving and who is the crime solver. Identify who that detective is in the story. Yesterday, we gave you some tips of how to solve the mysteries yourself as you're reading the story by being a mystery detective. We said it's very important to look at the details and the clues, to think about the details and the clues, and then to make predictions to try to solve that mystery before the characters in the story do. Well, today we're going to give you a few tips on how to become even better at making these predictions. Today's teaching point. Today, I want to teach you that mystery readers give proof for their predictions. Proof is another word for evidence, so mystery readers give proof or evidence for their predictions. Here's how they do it. They think back to what they know about each character and think, who might be a suspect and why? So today you're going to watch those characters go through the plot mountain. You're going to look for clues and details and think about how they connect together like a puzzle. And you're going to think about those different characters. What are they like? And who just might be a suspect in this mystery? So, so far this week, we've been focused just on that crime solver, that main character, the detective. Think about your superheroes, guys like this, who the story is mostly about. But when we're doing mysteries, they are not the only character in the story. And it's really important as we solve mysteries to focus on the other characters, those secondary characters. Earlier this year, we learned about secondary characters. When we read the genre of mystery, we sometimes will call these secondary characters suspects if we think they might be responsible for the problem in the story. Now remember, secondary characters affect the main character's journey. They can be advisors or teachers. Sometimes they're sidekicks or friends. And sometimes they're challengers or enemies. Today we're going to be looking at suspects in two different books. And remember, the big teaching point from today is as we look at these characters and why they might be suspects, we need to look for evidence, clues, details of why they might be the main suspect or they might be the one that caused the mystery. Let's try that now with Zapato Power. Let's take a look at Zapato Power, our mystery read aloud from earlier this year. The mystery was who gave Freddy the purple Zapatos? Let's try to find the suspects, the secondary characters that might have given him the purple Zapatos. 
Now, you probably remember from reading through the story that at the beginning, Freddy doesn't know where those purple Zabatos come from. So he starts looking for clues and he starts thinking about who might have sent them to him. He comes up with three suspects or people that might have, have done it. First, he thinks of Uncle Jorge. He also thinks of his dad's army friend. And then he also thinks of Mr. Vaslov. He thinks of Uncle Jorge because of this clue. Uncle Jorge often sends gifts in the mail to Freddy and his mom. But as we go through the plot mountain, we find out it is not Uncle Jorge when he talks to Uncle Jorge on the phone and says thanks for the package, and Uncle Jorge doesn't know what he's talking about. He thinks it's Dad's army friend because at his dad's funeral, there was a clue that his dad's army friend said he would take care of Freddy and his mom. So Freddy thinks, oh, maybe he's the one that sent the shoes. That prediction didn't end up being correct, however. At the end, they found out it was Mr. Vaslov, this teacher, advisor, that did it for him. The clues for Mr. Vaslov was that he watches Freddy race the train each day, that Mr. Vaslov likes to invent things, and that he's very friendly and helpful in solving problems. When you put those clues together, it makes sense that Mr. Vaslov was the correct suspect who gave Freddy the purple Zapatos. In Freddy Ramos, the mystery is a positive thing. He's trying to figure out who did a nice thing for him by giving him these purple Zapatos. So in this one, it would make sense that the suspect is somebody that has very positive character traits, like Mr. Vaslov, his teacher, his helper, this person that's very kind-hearted and helps all around Starwood Park Apartments. Not all mysteries have suspects that are positive, good guy characters. Sometimes the suspect's character traits are more negative, where it's an evil person, an enemy, a villain, when the problem is, is a, the mystery. Yesterday and today's read aloud, the case of the missing carrot cake, does have an actual problem where the character that might be responsible might be a little bit more negative. So now we might be looking at a secondary character that's more of an enemy or a problem causer. The mystery. What happened to Miss Rabbit's carrot cake? Well, our detectives have got it narrowed down to three different suspects or secondary characters. And here are the clues that they found for each one. Fowler the Owl, loved rabbit cake and mouse frosting, and knows the cake was missing and smelled it. The character traits for Porcini, or the clues there, is that he has a good sense of smell, eats anything, even vegetables, is eating everything around him when the police talk to him, and has been in trouble before for eating corn. The third suspect, or secondary character, is Hot Dog. And clues about him is that he says he doesn't smell anything, even though he does. He has ingredients for carrot cake in his kitchen, and he went to Miss Rabbit's house when the cat when the cake went missing. Now remember, mystery readers make their predictions based on that evidence, based on those clues that they've read so far. So, which of those secondary characters do you think might be the one that ate the carrot cake? Or do none of those secondary characters feel like they might be the best suspect? Might there be somebody else or something different that happened to the carrot cake? Mystery readers are going to keep thinking and thinking and thinking about it and using their skills and strategies to figure it out. Today we're talking about evidence, proof, clues about what suspects might be responsible for causing the problem. Well, let's take a look at a few clues and try to figure it out. So with all those clues and Melvin's past history of eating the milk duds, I ended up going to check in on Melvin, my top suspect. And you know what I found? When I looked at him and I opened, he opened up his mouth, 
and he had Oreo cookie crumbs all over his teeth. Melvin was the guilty one once again. Don't worry though guys, we're not mad at Melvin. He made a mistake and hopefully he'll learn from it. We still love him even if he did ruin snack time yesterday. Today, you guys have some jobs to do. Make sure you hop on that read aloud and find out uh, the end of the missing carrot cake mystery, uh, as well as getting on and doing your QAR questions for reading and your other learning activities. We hope you enjoyed this lesson. Have an awesome rest of your day. We'll see you next.